Okay. <laughs> Can you see? See on the other side. <gasps> oh. Back up. Back up. He's doing the movie. He's doing the movie. Back up, Scoob. First name? Uh, first name? Excuse me, first name? No, too many buttons there. Snacks? What? Uh, Scooby. Doobie. Do. Ah, I'm telling you. And boys, I'm going to get a series Alexi to this team. Σε έναν περιβάλλον το οποίο πρέπει να, να μάθει δεξι, όχι μόνο δεξιότητες, αλλά πρέπει παράλληλα να μάθει και να προσαρμόζεται στο περιβάλλον. Okay, like if right now, if, if I turn around and, and say stop, he's probably going to yell stop right back at me. Without doing anything. Yeah. Luke. Stop. <laughs> He's not doing anything. So did it solve anything by me yelling stop? No. No. How do you do that? I well, mean, you just have the screen right there. I know, but he's not there, so... What? It's like it's an eyeball. <laughs> I know. Where did you see the ball, ball? The, the center of the lens. Are you answering to that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I have a question because this is gonna. If he's yeah. shooting this whole thing, you're about to change everything. So, when you were talking, what were you looking at? Were you looking? I at, wasn't able to look. Were at you that. looking at him or the camera? Um, he mainly. Oh, oh my nowhere. gosh, you messed up everything. Oh, you guys will see Luke here in just a minute. I'm sure you'll probably see him a lot running across the screen. Uh, he's very unique. He's he's definitely our kid. Um, is very intelligent, very, very sharp, very, very funny, um, and he's also autistic. We got a lot of money to get done or is, but we're not going to be known. I tell him in, um, now I must be sure of the edge of this movie. I did was was born in a little bit of a Bernard de los Pandas. Σαν μπορούσα να πω ότι είναι αρκετά λειτουργικό όμορφο. Όμω επειδή μα είναι και δίγλωση, η καθυστέρηση στο λόγο ακόμα είναι πιο έντονη, όπω και στο μεγάλο μα το γιονίκη. Είχε καθυστέρηση στο λόγο. Ήμουν τριών μήνων έγκυο και είχα κατεδεί πανευρωπαϊκού αρσή βαρών. Ε, μετά είχαμε πάει η Αμερική και καταλάβαμε ότι δεν είχα δει περίοδο. Ε, θεωρήσαμε ότι ήταν το λόγο του ταξιδιού και μετά ανακαλύψαμε ότι ήμουν έγκυο. Άρα ε, χαρήκαμε. Χαρήκαμε τόσο πολλά το γεγονό ότι ήμουν έγκυο, χωρί να, να περιμένουμε ότι ήταν να ξαναμείνουμε έγκυο, γιατί ήμασταν εντάξει με το ένα μωρό. Ε, και μετά ξέρεις περιμένεις όλους τους μήνες να περιμένεις ένα μωρό και ξαφνικά γεννιέται και βλέπεις ότι ξέρεις δεν είναι όπως το άλλο μωρό But you compare them Almost, to the older child ναι, πάντα είχαμε να συγκρίνουμε And you say, oh, he's different from the older child True. But then you say, every child is different And then you say, yeah, but he's really different Every child is really different And then it was a spinning Άρχισαμε να του λέω, λέω σαν, ναι, καταλάβαμε ότι είπαμε στη θάλασσα και, όπς, δεν όταν ήταν ακόμα ενός χρονών, ενός, no, younger. Was it? Nine months? Yeah, something like that. And so, so he stayed on the bed. Και μετά άρχισε να περιστροφές μέσα στο πάρκο και ήταν τότε που λέω στο κλίν, νομίζω, ένα φτιστικός και πρέπει να μιλήσουμε. Δεν ήταν εύκολο. Νομίζω για κανένα γονιό, κανένα γονιό σε περιμένει ότι έναν ταξίδι σαν τούτο να αποκτήσει ένα μωρό και μετά ε, στην πορεία να αντιλαμβάνεσαι ότι το δικό σου το μωρό είναι η δουλειά που είχαν τις εσύ 20 χρόνια. It's difficult any time that even for a moment you think that any yeah. of your children are not perfect. Yes. Angels. Yes. Not, not just like made perfect, but... Correct. 
the absolute most perfect angel. Τι κάμαμε στην αρχή είναι πρέπει να το πάρουμε διάγνωση γιατί πέρα του ότι είναι εγώ είναι η δουλειά μου, εννοείται ότι δεν μπορώ να κάνω διαγνώσεις άρα πήγαμε στην παιδοψυχίατρο μας η οποία ε, σιγά σιγά μια διαδικασία ε, το οποίο αξιολόγησε ε, πήραμε τη διάγνωση επίσημα σε ηλικία των αρκετά νωρίς μπο, μπορεί να πω των δυο, δυο και κάτι We wanted someone else to be able to step in and say you know, I'm sorry but I think your child is autistic and then We were like, <laughs> yeah. We knew it. Πάντα αρχή μου όμως ήταν ότι πρώτο πράγμα που πρέπει να κάνεις σε οποιαδήποτε γονιό, σε οποιαδήποτε διάγνωση, είναι να ενημερώνεις και να εκπαιδεύεις το γονιό. Εμείς ήμασταν ήδη εκπαιδευμένοι. Ξέραμε τι είναι να περάσουμε. Ξέραμε που πολλοί γονείς πάντα έχουν η πιο μεγάλη έννοια. Μετά, τι είναι να κάνω. Ε, πού να πάω τώρα. Ε, να πάω στον τάδε θεραπευτή. Ξέρεις, ρωτάς άλλους γονιούς. Να πάω σε άλλο... Ο ένας ευχαριστημένος με ένα, ο άλλος είναι ευχαριστημένος με ένα άλλο. Εμείς να πω ότι ε, τίποτε που το έκαναμε με τον Λουκ. Εμείς δουλεύουμε με τον Λουκ σε φυσιολογικά πλαίσια. Απλά καταγράφουμε όπως το φαΐ. Ήταν α, τις προτεραιότητες των δυσκολιών του. Έτσι ξεκινήσαμε το... το Επίνε μόνο γάλα. Άρα πρέπει να δούμε να κάνουμε χωρίς το γάλα. Um, Not just only milk with three liters per day. Yeah. Minimum. Yeah. I didn't see anything wrong with it because if he was hungry, all I had to do was go and make a bottle of milk and give him milk, and he drank milk. It was super easy. Um, the last two weeks has been huge. Yeah. Well, I mean, to to get to this point was rough. There were a lot of lunches where you would have to hold him down and force him. To eat, we would have to hold his mouth open and force food into yes. his mouth, with him screaming and crying. Um, I mean, it, it resembled looking like torture. It But was. then he would take a bite, and he liked it. Almost it was. It was almost like clean. In the beginning, when they said to him, "I told him clean that I'm a foot or two more into him, and I could see him in this few palliative tactics. This, as I'm getting closer to the point." δική μου θεωρία φυσικά, ε, τόσο πιο εύκολο είναι να εκπαιδεύσεις οποιονδήποτε. Άρα, που τη στιγμή που κάποιος βλέπει κάτι ε, και δεν το δοκιμάζει, χωρίς να το δοκιμάσει, επιλέγει ότι θα το φάει, οτιδήποτε μόνο να συνεχίσουμε να το κάνουμε με τούτο, αυτισμός χωρίς αυτισμό. Άρα ήταν να παραμείνει με εκείνον που επιλέγει ότι δεν μου αρέσει και θα το φάω. Έτσι, ε, επειδή ο, ήταν, ο χαρακτήρας του Λουκ πέρα από τον αυτισμό του είναι εύκολος, ένα μωρό το οποίο όπως εν όλα τα δεύτερα μωρά της οικογένειας ε, <συσίλια> κάνει ό,τι <συσίλια> θέλει, ας πούμε. <συσίλια> Έτσι, κάθε φορά που ήθελε να πει γάλα και εμείς ε, θέλαμε να φάει κάτι και κρατούσα τον και αν ήθελε να το φάει που μόνος του έβαλα ότι απλά να τον τζίξει στα... <συσίλια> του, του λες να αρχίσει να καταλαβαίνει ότι άμα <συσίλια> το δοκίμαζε ε, μετά δεν έκανα κάτι άλλο, να αφήνω το τζάμε και αρχίζει, αρχίζει που μόνος του να τρώει. Ε, στην καταγραφή των τελευταίων μας uh, φρούτων, <laughs> um, he eats everything at this point. I mean, fruits of the, this period and he eats. We, we, we do mean like the last two to three weeks. Yeah. Watermelon, the marshmallow, the cantaloupe. Yeah. Cherries, bananas, Cherries, bananas apples, grapes, apples. Grapes. So I bought all of them. I literally went to the store, strawberries, and bought everything of every fruit they had, just so if he gets hungry, we have anything he might want, other than, other than milk, we, we can give that to him. I think a lot of his communication now is, it's phrases that he's heard from cartoons, from uh, movies, YouTube, uh, videos, things like that. But It hasn't been a bad thing because he is learning when to use them. You It's know, more he, functional. It, it is like he, you know, the other. Well, even coming out here, he stood by the door and said, "Okay, let's go." Yeah. You know, so he can he can he hear the phrase, why. "Okay, let's go," from Scooby Doo, and then he knows that if he goes to the door and grabs the door handle and looks at me and says, "Okay, let's go," you know, he, he's learning how to use it. Um, he might say it with the Scooby Doo voice. You know, but I'll I'll take that right now. If he's hungry, 
Yeah. And he can't say, Dad, I want milk. He gets frustrated. Yeah, he gets angry because he turns to me and then I don't know what to say. Because, and he yells louder and I don't know what he's yelling at. But if he can walk over to the fridge and take a thing of, it's got a, a, a bottle of milk on it and then show this to me, then I know that he wants milk. So then I make milk and he communicated with me. So he solved the problem without the frustration. But before we had any way of communicating, um, yeah, he, I mean, he did break the window with his head, yeah. beating it on it. Um, he, he would beat his head on the floor, on the concrete walls. Um, I think that's a lot of the reasons why he yells and screams now. He wants to say something, and you know he, he can't figure out what to say. Πολλές φορές μέσα σε μέσα οικογένειες, οι οικογένειες δεν θέλουν να χρησιμοποιούν οτιδήποτε εικόνες οι οποίες να χρησιμοποιούν είτε για να επικοινωνήσουν τα μωρά τους. Νομιζόμενοι ότι του τον ένα κρατήσει τον λόγο πίσω. Μια όμως ένας μύθος του τον το πράγμα, ο οποίος δεν ισχύει. Πολλές φορές κάποιοι, είτε οι γονείς είτε οι δικοί, μπορεί να το ξεκινήσουν μια εβδομάδα και να πω «Αι, δεν το θέλει, δεν του αρέσκει». Θέλει πάρα πολύ υπομονή, θέλει πάρα πολύ επιμονή. Ε, μπορεί να σπάσει να δε βάζει, μπορεί να σχίσει τις εικόνες, μπορεί να τις ρίξει κάτω, μπορεί να τις γυρεύκουμε. But a lot, of, a lot of people think that it's going to make allow their child to be lazy. Yeah. That they can use that and not have to speak. But no. no so far, we've had no experience. Every time we've given him an opportunity to, to find an easy way to communicate, he's learned. Yeah. I mean, everyone's always said, "Ah, oh, don't give your child the iPad. It's just another screen in front of their face." No. We, I mean, we limit what he can watch. Yeah. We turn off the 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 adult YouTube. Yeah. Um, we limit. The Wi-Fi access. I've got. I've had Wi-Fi turned off for more than a month. Movies. I put, yeah, uh, I, I, cartoon. Yes, Sesame Street and, and cartoons that have a educational type theme to it. And he is nonstop used that. He's learned the uh, alphabet in English. Numbers. Numbers from Greek one to twenty in English and one to ten in Greek. Yeah. Um, all from iPad and 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 it's not just he can say them in sequence. I can hold up six fingers and he can tell me six in Greek or English. Αν βάλουμε τα δύο το iPad του και το πίνακα επικοινωνίας, αποφασίσαμε να πιάσουμε ένα communication device, το οποίο είναι high-tech, είναι ευθυνό, όμως θεωρούμε ότι ειδικά το δικό μας το μωρό τέλος πάντων να το βοηθήσει. Για μένα τα πιο πολλά μωρά βοηθά τα. Τούτον πρέπει να έχει ο κάθε γονιός υπόψη ότι δεν είναι ο λόγος τόσο σημαντικός όσο η επικοινωνία. Δηλαδή για μας θέλαμε να, ο γιος μας να ξεκινήσει να επικοινωνά. Τώρα αν, αν, ήθελ, αν ξέραμε και κινέζικα και μπορούσαμε να επικοινωνήσουμε <laughs> κινέζικα, τούτο θα ήταν και okay για μας. Φτάνει να, να ξέρει ότι για μας είναι ένας τρόπος επικοινωνίας που ήβραμε. Now the education part of him. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Πήραμε το συνεπιαγωγείο σε, σε μονάδα ε, με μωρά με αυτισμό. I was not ready for him to go to school. I wanted my little guy to stay home with me because he had been home with me every day, 24 hours a day, his entire life up to that point. Um, so I just wanted him to stay home and I thought everything, why would he go to school? He's three. Um, Probably what the first weekend where he woke up on a Saturday and <laughs> yeah, first weekend. he woke up and, and got dressed and put his backpack on and stood at the door uh, ready to go to school again. That's probably when it hit me that this was where he wanted to go. I think I got worried sending him to school because I still do because most days by the time I get to bed, I'm just fried because I've chased him around all day and we kind of go back and forth with this, you know. I babe. have him in the morning. So. Yeah, 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 right, yeah. And then I'll, I'll get him to bed at night. But during the normal days, the normal weeks, we do this thing back and forth where it's like a silent, baby, I need, I need we need to switch off for a few minutes. Yeah. And it's like, can you take him for just a few minutes while I go somewhere else or I step outside and we go back and forth and there's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, but it I'm, should be like that. It, it should. We, we, we have to. We've done really good as, as switching off and on when we know the other person needs some help. But I was so afraid that, is he going to school and doing the same to the teachers? And then when I would go pick him up from school, 
I do what every parent does. You know, you sneak into the school and you look through the window like this. And I've got my phone. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to see him. And then I'm like, oh, he's going to be in there. And he's just going to be running in circles, throwing things. And the room's going to be a mess. And I look inside and he's sitting down in a chair or standing by the chair. Because sitting is not his thing. And he's being an angel. And, and all the kids in the classroom are doing this. You know, and I'm looking inside and I'm I'm thinking the teacher is a magician. He gets socialized there. I mean, he gets to his normal class. He gets to his special class. He learns his um, activities, what he needs to learn for his age. At this point, he knows all the animals in Greek and English, what their sounds are. We're thankful for the teacher, special ed teacher there and the speech therapist that they're working with him. That's all what he does, though. And what else therapy? Πάει μόνο ότι, ότι του προσφέρεται μέσω τη ειδική εκπαίδευση στο σχολείο και τη λογοθεραπεία. Και προσωπικά δεν θεωρώ ότι είναι αρκετό. For a long time, I, I didn't want to ask your parents or um, like my training partner, Ilia, uh, just to come over and, and hang out with my kids or take my oldest son to the mall something like that, you know, and, and then I think the smarter that I got, the more I realized it's okay to ask somebody, get help from everybody who'll give you help. If somebody says, hey, do you need someone to watch your kids for a few minutes? The answer is yes. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, the answer is yes, and then appreciate it. Όλα τα αντρόινα έχουν το ανάγκη ή και ο αντρόινων να μένει ενή. Ο κάθε γονιός έχει τον το χρόνο που χρειάζεται για, για τον εαυτό του. Η έννοια μας είναι τα μωρά μας και ο εν, ας πούμε, εμένα, ε, μοιάζει με έναν καλά ο άντρας μου και τα μωρά μου και εννοείται μετά η υπόλοιπη οικογένεια. Όμως, δεν είναι τόσο σημαντικό για μένα αν, αν κλαίει μέσα στο κατάστημα και αν κάποιο με βλέπει. Αν τύχει κάτι, πολλέ φορέ, αν μα δει κάποιο παράξενα, όπω λέω, κλείνει κι εγώ, α πούμε να το πω, ναι, ο γιο μου έχει αυτισμό, δεν είναι κάτι το οποίο είναι να κρύψω. Θεωρώ ότι ούτε για να το δικαιολογήσω, αλλά για να τον ενημερώσω. In, in order for something to be offensive, you have to let it offend you. And I, I just don't care. Yeah. I really, I'm, I'm really the only thing that I care about, I think, in, in life is my family and my job and my training. Γυρίζω τον κόσμο um, δουλεύοντας με άτομα τα οποία δουλεύουν με αυτισμό είτε δουλεύοντας απευθείας με άτομα ε, με αυτισμό σε ολόκληρη την Ευρώπη και γενικά στον κόσμο. Πρέπει να σας πω ότι η Κύπρος είναι ένα αρκετά καλό σημείο. Ε, δυστυχώς, τούτο που πρέπει ως γονεί πάντα να έχουμε υπόψη μας είναι να είμαστε εμεί ενημερωμένοι και να μην περιμένουμε από του άλλου. Ε, να κάνουν τη δουλειά τη δική μα ω γονεί. Ε, ο αυτισμό είναι κάτι που ευδιαβίου. Ο, Λου, ο Λουκ έχει αυτισμό. Ε, ε, διαγνώστηκε με αυτισμό και να έχει για πάντα αυτισμό. Και εμεί είμαστε οι γονεί του. Ε, μπορεί να μην είμαστε εδώ για πάντα, όμω το που μπορούμε να του δώσουμε είναι τον τρόπο μέσω του συστήματο να εκπαιδευτεί και εμεί ω γονεί να τον εκπαιδεύσουμε. Ε, για να μπορέσει να γίνει ανεξάρτητος. You know, when parents say, oh, we were, oh, we got the diagnosis when he was four, and it was like, it's like, that's when everything bad happened. Well, no. he, he was autistic before that. Yeah. That wasn't the bad day. That was the good day. That was the day where you figured out what, was what wrong. yeah, what, what, what you can do to make things better. True. You know, it's like, you know, having the flu, well, now I know what medicines to take, you know. Now I know that it's, you know, what to do to, to get better. I break my arm, I know i got to put it in the cast and take some medicine. Now I know what to do now that I know that my arm is broken. Otherwise, I just knew that my arm really hurt bad. So, you know, once you get the diagnosis, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter if he, you know, was diagnosed or not. Now you know what to do next. So, you know. I think people focus on which side of the family did it come from. Are you sure? Do we really want to tell anyone he was diagnosed? 
it doesn't matter. You know, hit the ground running and, and start making progress. The complicated part is finding out where to start yep. and, and what to go next. If we were improving the system somewhere, we would like to have someone that kind of just, gra you know, as soon as you got the diagnosis, or maybe that helped you get the diagnosis and then just grabbed you with a map and said, step two is yep. here. Go here and, and then step three is here to True. this person. Because um, you have all this grief right and you and go through as a parent and you don't know what to do and then you are lost anyway and so you, you don't finish one appointment that they don't tell you okay now you need to make an appointment and go see this next person <laughs> they just say have a nice day and send you home true you know and, and if, if you've been where we are you you're laughing because you know it's true they just said have a nice day we'll send you the bill you know Nick, um, drive, drive carefully do i think it's a disability <laughs> Um, man, that's a, that's a tough question. I, I think probably from a society way to look at things, we look at, you oh, know, the, the system, the system, we look at the system. Hey, buddy. Hey, hey, look. And we think, you know, okay, legally this could, this, you know, can classify as a, a disability, but, um, I honestly believe this is society's opportunity to help people. Um, you can take someone like him and you can forget about him and he will make no progress. Or as a society, you can take someone like him and help him to become something special. Send us an email. If yeah. you want to talk to somebody. Not a lot just, though because yeah, we're, short emails. We don't want to. Yeah, because yeah, we don't really want to read. <laughs> We care. <laughs> or we care. Yeah. <laughs> but not a lot. Yeah, but not a lot. We get, you know, and we prefer we're not memes. licensed psychiatrists, <laughs> so technically we can't do that job. Yeah, memes. memes funny memes. Not funny memes, we prefer that, but. Yeah. And you, you can have beer delivered to our house. But, yeah. um. <laughs> that was going to No, if, if, if I, I think, you know, it's, it's benefited before just to type something out. Yeah. You're feeling bad. At the end of the day, it feels good just to type something out, hit send to somebody. Um, but we're always here. You can always reach out to us somewhere and, and yell at us. If nothing else, see what we're doing next, where we're going to be, and uh, come join us. <laughs> okay. All right. It's a nice thing to say. Yeah. All right. No, we're close. Doesn't really mean it. But. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you.